This is Reformation and Revival Now. I'd like to welcome you to our Love for Muslims prayer visual. This is a tool that you can use any time of the month, mid-month, the beginning of the month, at the end, anytime you'd like to for your church or for your prayer group. My name is Kevin Jones and God gave me this call and uh, some of you remember when I actually came on my site and announced that call. Well, I am still participating in it and I am still encouraging the body of Christ to get involved. Look at this 1040 window. Two thirds of it affects Muslim people. Two thirds of it affects Muslim nations. So on this prayer tool, we're gonna to take a look at the foundations that we're gonna be using for prayer. Let's take a look at the prophecy in Isaiah 19, 19 through 25, because this is what our prayer, our prayer time will be based on. This is the foundation of scripture for everything that we're doing. And it is a word of prophecy that we are standing on for prayer. In that day, there will be an altar to the Lord in the heart of Egypt. And there will be a monument to the Lord at its border. It will be a sign and a witness that the Lord of heaven's armies is worshiped in the land of Egypt when the people cry to the Lord for help against those who oppress them, he will send them a savior who will rescue them. The Lord will make himself known to the Egyptians. Yes, they will know the Lord and will give their sacrifices and offerings to him. They will make a vow to the Lord and will keep it. The Lord will strike Egypt and then he will bring healing. For the Egyptians will turn to the Lord, and he will listen to their pleas and heal them. In that day, Egypt and Assyria will be connected by a highway. The Egyptians and the Assyrians will move freely between their lands, and they will both worship God and Israel will be their ally. The three will be together, and Israel will be a blessing to them. For the Lord of heaven's armies will say, Blessed be Egypt, my people. Blessed be Assyria, the land I have made. Blessed be Israel, my special possession. This is the foundational scripture that we're standing on for the Love for Muslims prayer vigil. And in this tool, we'll, we will refer to this prophecy often. All right, here are the nations that I want you to take a look at that we'll be praying for. One will be Egypt, because that's where the prophecy starts. Two will be the Assyrian overlay nations of Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Iraq, Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Turkey, and Greece. And the third is Israel. Next are the promises that we stand on to warfare against ISIS and organizations like that, such as Hezbollah. These scriptures are just standard spiritual warfare scriptures that we will be using uh, for this tool. So let's get started. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons and not worldly weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish every one who remains disobedient. And they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the lamb 
and the word of our testimony and we love not our lives unto the death. And when he had called them unto, when he had called unto his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is none of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he is in you or he that is within you is greater than he that is in the world. This is so important that we war with the word of God and we win those wars when we have faith in God's word. Promises for Muslims and all nations. This is the section where we take a spotlight nation and we pray for that nation. Let's take a look at the promises here. I have other sheep too that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will, and there will be one flock with one shepherd. Remember that Christ came as a servant to the Jews to show that God is true to the promises he made to their ancestors. He also came so that the Gentiles might give glory to God for his mercies to them. That is what the psalmist meant when he wrote, For this I will praise you amongst the Gentiles. I will sing praises to your name. And in another place it is written, Rejoice with his people, ye Gentiles. And yet again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles. Praise him, all ye people of the earth. And in another place, Isaiah said, The heir to David's throne, Jesus, will come, and he will rule over the Gentiles. They will place their hope on him. But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was manifest to those who did not ask for me. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Then saith he unto the disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send laborers into his harvest. Now I believe that these promises are foundation, are foundational for praying for all nations.